This episode of the Blue Collar Real Estate Podcast brought to you by Stacy Mayo and the Scott Miller team at Ruoff Mortgage. Whether you're buying new or refinancing, Ruoff has a solution for you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Blue Collar Real Estate. I'm Greg. And I'm Ryan. Greg, if, I feel like it's been a good minute and a half since we've like done this. It, I know it hasn't been, but it's like... It's been a couple weeks. There's a lot going on, dude. It is. It's like middle of January, and everything's still gangbusters crazy busy right now. Oh, it's insane. And 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 if I might mention, other than our small meeting last night, we have not been at the Blue Collar Real Estate Global Headquarters we in a while. We have not. The Blue Collar Real Estate Global Headquarters has not been uh, taking much of our money here recently, and uh, we'll leave that, uh, that, uh, that specific location undisclosed at this time. <laughs> Well, I can't. I can't have throngs of fans rushing in to jump all over you. I just can't. I don't have know it. about me. It's it's you, you Mister Author, like book signing guy, like got all this awesome stuff working in your life right now. So I think I'm gonna have to like fend them off you at this uh, point. No, because I'm just old. They'll be like, oh, he's like my grandpa. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I, before we get into what we're doing today, and, and obviously the title kind of gives it away a little bit, but I, I just kind of bringing everybody up to speed. Right, yeah. we're into a new year. We've got projects going on. You've got projects going on with Roofco, solar projects going on. Um, We've, me and and Adam with military grade and four core capital, we've got some affordable builds we're doing downtown. Those are coming along. And and I want to remind everybody we're going to follow that progress throughout the year. Hopefully, it doesn't take a year to build them. (laughs) That'd be bad. That'd be bad. If the investors are watching, I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> but we're going to kind of walk through that. Every episode, starting next time, we're going to have a snippet, an update. Yeah. What are we doing? Why is it affordable? And most importantly, which is a tie into today, what's green about it? See, that's what I'm excited about because we've got some new tools that we're going to like share with the world today. And they're not new tools to the world, but they're tools that we recently acquired that uh, we're going to share about green energy. You know, we've done so many episodes, I feel like, on this topic. But today we're going to like go in and provide some real practical and actionable like insight as to like how's your home actually performing from an energy efficiency standpoint, yep. which both you and I geek out about. So we'll try to spare the audience a little bit here and uh, not go too technical with all this stuff. But it's exciting because we're going to like show you a couple different ways and things to think about where you can maybe save some money with your heating and cooling cost and trying to do your little part to do a little more green work. And and be mindful for anybody watching or listening as we're going forward. The house that the pictures we're going to show and, and you're going to talk us through because you got that boss thermal camera. It's pretty cool. We got what? it right here. And this, by the way, I want to just say something about like thermal imagery real quick. Oh, hell yeah. Because... About oh, 11, 12 years ago, we got our first thermal camera when I was working at a, a pretty good sized roofing company at the time. And it was really a game changer because you were literally able to show people in color exactly like, hey, where's heat escaping my house? Yeah. Like, what's going on? And it was real time data. It's like, yeah, it's feel, you know, you know, versus, ah, it's a little chilly in here. Well, this like literally shows you why it's a little bit chilly in here. And at that time, it led to us, you know, really blowing up insulation sales and finding, you know, ways to to help customers, you know, you know, really improve the energy efficiency of their homes. And so I went ahead and bought one a few weeks ago, and it has been so much fun and so educational for so many people. And it's like the size of like a credit card. Yeah, that's what, hold it's that super up. super awesome. So if you're watching on YouTube or you're not watching on YouTube, hurry up and get onto YouTube and check this out because it's it's literally like size of a credit card. It's super super yeah, small. I don't point, know what camera to the, you're on. Yeah, there, the one, right there. yeah, the the red light. You're right, Jason. Yeah. But it's super small. <laughs> it actually plugs into your phone, and the quality of this is way better than the stuff I was using ten years ago, which was at that time a five thousand dollar camera. So it's it's super exciting. I'm I'm beyond ecstatic to share what we found in this house with everybody today. Well, and like I told you yesterday, back during the recession, so this would have been. Please silence all cell phones. That would be you, Herget. Sorry. <laughs> Rookie. It, Jason, I'm just thankful we're not going live. Uh, uh, actually. <laughs> anyway, don't burst my bubble. Anyway, so at the same time, back during the recession, I took a class to become a certified ener- energy auditor for homes. Uh, I was already a contractor. It just seemed like a natural thing to add on, right? Well, I did. I went through the class, and I told you last night when we were playing with that thing, I couldn't afford the camera. Mm-hmm. Back then, it was $5,000. Literally. And so I get through this class, and I go start looking online at different stuff that I can buy to start doing these energy audits. <laughs> I see that camera. And the $5,000 one, by the way, wasn't the expensive one. No, that was like a mid-grade one at the time. <laughs> right. And so to have that, and it just connects to your phone, and we're going to show people the images we got, 
And something super, super important, a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about is not very expensive to do. No, not at all. Not and, at all. and a lot of it, correct me right or wrong, is DIY stuff, stuff you could do yourself. That's why we're doing this, I, I feel, because you know, you know, at Roofco, we are working on this entire DIY project right now about literally pulling back the curtain on all things roofing, you know, for those that want to get on the roofs and do that stuff. Some people do. And we want to show people that. We want to show people exactly how to do everything, where to go buy everything. And the same thing applies with, with this. And that's what I'm so excited about. Not everybody wants to get in their attic and blow in insulation. If you don't, then we got you. But if you want to, you can certainly do all that. So it's all about providing the education and just simply some understanding as to what's going on with your house versus, yep. oh, I need to put a new, you know, eight thousand dollar furnace in. Well, maybe, you know, maybe you do, but what else can you do to maybe offset that a little bit more or make that new eight thousand dollar furnace work a little bit better? So it's not just the one thing that you upgraded because there's so many areas as we're going to see here in just a few minutes where energy escapes homes and. By the way, I can just tell you from experience that putting a bunch of loose insulation in an attic, that job really blows. It's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. Thank you. Two shows tomorrow. Um, and it does. It's a nasty job. Uh, it The cellulose we talked about yep. especially, but um, it, it's something you can do fairly cheap mm -hmm. because most places, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, if you buy enough bags of the loose insulation, they'll they, give you the machine they give for the day machine for nothing. Use. You got it. You got it. So it's it's all there. It's just choosing, you know, where do I want to apply this in order to start saving some money, you know, not only every month on your heating and cooling costs, but simply, you know, reducing your carbon footprint, which is super important to both you and I, and just showing people better ways to make their homes work for them versus against them. So without further ado, mm -hmm. let's roll out that first pick. All right. So we're going to start with this and we're going to like look at the normal photo of what's going on. So if you're, you know, again, not on YouTube, hurry up and get on YouTube and check this out. It'll be way easier. But now, what can, we'll, go before ahead. we get into that, can we talk about the craftsmanship and this built-in and this pallet wall? That is exceptional. I would agree with that. The craftsmanship is is fantastic. That guy. He must hey, know what he's doing. He must. I mean, I just feel like, let's cover up the name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, talk, talk us through what we're looking at, bro. All right, so we are looking at just a basic picture of a fireplace right now, right? So it's a fireplace in the corner of a living room. I'm sure many of you listening right now have a fireplace in the corner of your living room. And it looks cool, and there's you know many ways to decorate you know your fireplace, etc. But now we're going to like fast forward to the next photo, because this next photo is going to be a thermal image of the exact same look. But it's going to show us where heat's like literally escaping right now. So if we look at this photo right now, and again, this would be so much easier if you're on YouTube, but uh, literally around the brick, it's purple in yep. the thermal end. It's purple, and everywhere around there is like fire, right? So help, help people understand what the different colors mean. So what that means is that that's where all this heat is being lost. That's cold air coming into the house because maybe there's not enough insulation in that area. Maybe it's just brick, which is not necessarily a good insulating you know, you know product. It's I believe brick as in, and don't quote me on this, but it's around R3 is yeah. the you know insulation factor of brick. So, you know, there's, there's, there's so much heat loss being lost through this fireplace right now because there's no insulation either perhaps behind it etc but that's where you've literally got this whole area of your house right now that is just like this suck of you know it you're just losing all of mm -hmm. your conditioned living air so these photos was, brought to you by Fleur, apparently by Fleur. yes that is the name of the camera so if you want to hop on uh, amazon and buy one of these cameras about 350 bucks and you're good to go it's french so they make thermal cameras and drop rifles <laughs> anyway um what no all right <laughs> I missed that one. So, well, I, <laughs> never mind. Hey, they helped us in the revolution. That's all I'm saying. We digress. Um, so, but th to me, when you were shooting this and we were looking at it, this is powerful. I I'm a very visual learner, yeah. right? So you don't have to run out a big data sheet with me or run down some spreadsheet and do a bunch of figures. I can see it. Yeah, like the old adage goes, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? right? Well, I can say, well, you're losing heat here, here, and here, or I can just show you a picture of literally the heat being sucked out of your house right there. And that's what we're looking at here with this fireplace. And fireplaces, you know, are, you know, naturally, they're not a very, you know, energy efficient, you know, tool. They can definitely produce heat, but if they're not being used, it's definitely not producing heat. And in this case, you're losing an enormous amount of heat right here with yeah. the fireplace right here. So, so let's kind of fast forward to something else because this is something that is, you know, very, very common. But the next photo that we're going to look at here, this is another, uh, you know, thermal image, but it's actually up in the attic. And this one's not quite 
not quite as clear, unfortunately, from a, a, uh, a photo standpoint. We should uh, probably fire the uh, photographer on this one. But, uh, but nevertheless, we're actually in the attic here, and we can see that you know, you've got a nice blanket of insulation there, which is why you know, part of the photo is all purple, because it's cold. You know? yeah. But then all of a sudden, you have this fire rod sticking out of your, you know, <laughs> not fire rod, I should say. <laughs> but basically, it looks like a flame coming through your attic insulation, mm -hmm. which is what's you know, a can light. Okay? And how many houses have can lights that are literally coming up there? So something you can do, and this is where I, you know, the first little you know, home improvement tip of the day, you can actually go to Lowe's or Menards. Owens Corning makes these little tents. Yep. Right? There are these little tents that cost about $15, and it insulates over can lights. And that's all you have to do is throw one of those little tents over there, and it's going to reduce the amount of heat loss coming, you know, coming through that section of the roof tremendously. And it's, yeah, those, you know. Eh. Wouldn't there actually be heat generated from the light? Too, well, the heat is is definitely generated from light, but it wasn't even on when right. we took this photo. Uh, yeah. Was the thing. So, no, that's a super good point, Jason. Thank you for bringing that up because, yes, that can certainly you know you know you know skew some numbers a little bit or you know the the photo. But yeah, this was taken about four o'clock in the afternoon yesterday, and yeah, there was no lights on, and that was just literally heat just coming right through because right around that can light, there is literally no insulation. Yeah, right? it's so. just metal on metal. And something to note important in this, these rafters up here. Um, they're they're hot, right? Mm -hmm. They're giving off heat, or they have heat in them, I should say. But it's important to know, like you said, it was four o'clock in the afternoon, and this whole roof slope right here is south facing. Yep. So that that heat gain is what you're getting right here. That's what you're seeing on the rafters in this particular photo. Is you know you know it just simply you know yesterday it was almost 50 degrees outside here in right. Indiana. You know, so it's super super you know warm out. Well, not super warm. That's actually cold as heck still. But, <laughs> but not for January. You know, that's what it's picking up. Is it's picking up the 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 uh, heat signature from the roof itself right there. But and and what I wanted to point out about that is that's okay because down here underneath this blanket in the living space. It's purple. It's keeping the conditioned air in the house, right. which is what you're paying for, right? You right. know, everything that you're paying to stay warm. I mean, you're you're not up in your attic unless you got to go fix something. Generally speaking, you know, so it's keeping the conditioned air inside the house. So you know, this roof and you know this attic situation is really performing very well with this particular home. So, so. all right, next. All right, so the next thing thing that we want to look at, and this is an area, you know, depending on where the furnace and water heater at in your garage, or, you know, if it's in your garage, maybe it's in your house somewhere, but, you know, looking at, you know, what's going on with that, you know, your water heater is something, depending on your household size and many other factors, you know, your water heater is something that is constantly running, right? right. You know, it's using energy, and, you know, if you go touch your water heater, it's generally speaking a little bit warm because it's got to keep that, wa you know, hot water ready to go. Well. What you can do, and you can go buy one of these for about 30 bucks, but you can buy an insulated thermal blanket for your mm -hmm. water heater. So that way, you know, you can see in this photo right now, there's some, you know, really strong heat signatures coming here. But even the water heater itself, it's quite a bit lighter than the surrounding area because the, you know, everything was in the garage in this particular house. So it was a little bit colder out. But yeah, this water heater is giving off a lot of heat. And again, going and spending extra $30 on that blanket is going to keep that heat in. So again, you're not having to constantly run that water heater which is raising your heating and cooling costs, right? Right. It just simply makes it easier. Go ahead. And beyond the blanket, so these two lines up here where you see the orange, those are the water lines for the water heater. The the little sleeves, they're slit down the middle, mm -hmm. right, um, that you can go and pick up. They come in two to four foot length sections. You can go pick those up for a couple dollars. Literally. And you can wrap those lines, and that makes a difference. Now, this particular house, these people just had this gas um, furnace installed. Mm -hmm. They got the highest efficiency, excuse me, gas furnace they could find, mm -hmm. right? So that's what this is. This is gas manifold, lines going everywhere, whatever. That water heater, they told me, is only a couple of years old, and mm -hmm. it's electric. Now that they've converted that to gas, this will eventually go to a tankless system. That's what we're talking about. Which is super energy efficient, right? My brother had one installed, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, my older brother. And it pays for itself pretty quick. Yeah, it it's, absolutely does. And, you know, if you don't have the tankless system, if, you know, you are ever in the situation where you need to upgrade your water heater, I would highly recommend a tankless system. I mean, they're just immensely more energy yep. efficient. Yes, you know, the upfront cost of one is just a touch more. But at the end of the day, it, you know, as you just said, they pay for themselves very, very quickly. 
and you're doing the world a favor, you know. So, which is what I love about it. And but until then, so I just I wanted to mention the tankless thing because yes, we all understand keeping thirty or forty gallons of water hot all the time is grossly energy efficient and crappy for the planet. <laughs> but that's something down the road. For today, you spend thirty dollars on your blanket and another ten dollars on my pipe sleeve, so hundred fifty bucks in an hour of your time, and this will be way more efficient. Exactly. That's exactly it. And that's the goal is, you know, what are the small little things? You know, success is never found over like one, you know, one big home run. Generally, it's all the compound right. effect of all the little things that you can do spread over a period of time. And, you know, you think about, you know, trying to keep that, you know, that water heater warm when it's 30 degrees in this garage right now, probably, or maybe 35. Yeah, that thing's got to work a lot. So give it a little help. Put a thermal blank, you know, you know blanket around yeah. it and give it some help. And that's going to help you out, save you some money, et cetera. So now we're getting ready to move forward into the really, really interesting photos i'm super excited about Me these too. these next photos so this this <laughs> this is a window this is us just standing there you know we got the new iphone 12 taking photos couple and of actually, creepers it's like i don't know what we're looking at here but yeah so you can also see greg and i in this photo through the the uh, reflection but uh, nevertheless this is a window i don't know greg what would you guess this window is probably wh how old it looks original to the house, so it's probably 40-plus years old. Okay, so... All wood. So imagine a 40-year-old all-wood window, and it's probably, what, a single pane? Was it double pane? It's a double pane. Okay, so it's a double pane window, but it's all wood, and it's about 40 years old, okay? And so the next photo we're going to look at, it, and I'm so excited about this, I'm going to, like, geek out a little bit right now, but we're going to show you, like, some comparisons between old windows and new windows here in just a second. But this... This is the photo of the heat coming from this, looking at it from the outside. Yep. And literally, it's on fire. If you know, you're know you not on YouTube right now, the picture on the screen is fire, literally coming from this window. I mean, it has just got heat coming everywhere <laughs> from it. It's, it's insane. It's kind of crazy. It's absolutely kind of crazy. But when you look at how many windows the average house ha has on it, and you literally are just, you know, you've got fire coming from, you know, from your, I don't mean to keep calling it fire. It just looks like fire. In this Every photo. time you say that, I hear beavis <laughs> in my head going, fire, fire. <laughs> I know, right? You know? <laughs> but all the heat loss coming from this. I, I mean, got it. I got it. It's a, yeah. You got what? No, I got it. his joke. He was looking around for confirmation. <laughs> no, no. I, I looked back to see if the camera was on me or on the screen, and I saw the red and went, oh, good. They got my beavis. <laughs> Better my cornholio. But anyway, Fire. <laughs> But that's what we're looking at right now. So this is the exact same window, you know, probably, what, 40 years old maybe? Mm -hmm. You know, 40-year-old window right now. And there is just an immense amount of heat loss coming from this window. So, again, areas, you know, and this is not new information. Everybody knows that windows are a great way to save energy in your home. But this is a great visual representation of actually what's happening and why they're costing you money right here. So one, th one thing, a couple things I want to share about that. Number one, that window is about six feet wide and about five feet tall yep. when you put that whole unit together that is a huge square yeah. footage of space to just have heat just it's literally 30 right square out. foot yeah. yeah i mean 30 square foot of just an open area where heat has the opportunity to come out and the other thing i wanted to share so this house is all brick on the outside there's brick insulation drywall blah 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 look how nice and purple yep the actual wall is so the wall is doing great even our soffit is doing great this window, and by the way, look at our reflection. See how we're glowing? You know what that is? Confirmation that we're hot, dude. Right on. <laughs> right here. Come on. Yeah, dog. You know that's right. Anyway. Or but at least we're on fire. There you go. On fire, at least. But So that's that's what's incredible about this is because, you know, you know, again, a picture's worth a thousand words, and, you know, a window doesn't look like it's a problem, right? But then when you look at it through another lens, literally – all of a sudden you see that there's a massive challenge with this window. So let's look at it from the next standpoint though, because there's, you know, in this particular house, there's a couple new windows in it as well that they had replaced. So we're looking at an interior photo of this, and we're gonna look at this from two different standpoints. We're gonna look at, at what's happening with this new window, both from the inside and the outside. Now, let me, these people had me replace this window for them. Okay. Uh, back in the summer. And I want to explain how I did it. Okay. The, the, the short, short version, right? Because it, it's a process. But I took it out, the, the old window, and I had ordered a new construction window. It was meaning I went all the way down to the studs. Mm -hmm. Put the new window in. I put um, a butyl tape sealant around the outside. And then I manufactured trim out of ASEC, which is a moisture rod, mm -hmm. bug-resistant product on the outside, caulked it all, sealed it in. From the inside, we insulated all the cavities we could get to. 
right? Yep. But with every single house, there's going to be areas that can't be insulated, though. Right. right. So, you, but my point is, you get to what you can get to. Hundred percent. While you got the wall open, get to everything you can get to. Um, that little window above the kitchen, I went through two cans of foam sealant. That's a lot. Hitting everything I could. And then you put the window in. Uh, this is a great Simonton windows. They're great energy efficient windows. I've been using them for 20 years, 17 years. Anyway, so that's the process. That's what we do to try to button it up around the window because you can put the nicest window you want. You can put a triple pane in there with argon gas and low E and the whole nine. If you don't seal around the window, you're going to lose. It really doesn't matter. You, yeah. So let's see how it worked out compared right. to the front window. So fast forward here, Jason. So we are looking at this from the interior of it. And so you can see a little bit of fire on the screen, but that's mainly coming from the dishwasher, which I believe was running when yeah. we were there yesterday. Yeah. So the dishwasher is running. You can see that heat, that heat signature. But the only place that you can see right here where there's in, any in, inconsistency with the heat is directly above the window where it's like a deep, dark purple, where it's yep, purple, right which means it's cold around it. But it's deep, dark purple. The, you know above it just because that's you know your, it's your bulkhead and there's no possible way to you know insulate that at all right there so you know this is performing infinitely better now jason if you don't mind flip to the next photo here because this is what's going to be impressive we're going to look at this from the outside now so here's the same window shot from the outside and then fast forward to the next shot wow right uh, it's working a little bit better isn't it Right. Instead of fire coming you know, from this window, it's actually the same temperature. I mean, it's cooler than the brick around it, literally. Whereas the brick on the other photo was, you know, purple, right? Because it was, you know, there there was such a temperature difference with the mm -hmm. window. Well, this window is working so much better that this window is now, per, you know, purple, which means it's cold, and the brick is hot because it, you know, the camera is picking up the difference in the heat, in the 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 uh, heat temperature. So. This window is performing probably about 100 times better than that other window right here. And you can see it. It's not losing heat anywhere around it. So it's just, it's an incredible display of what new technology you know, allows a home to do and how it allows it to uh, perform. This window is not losing heat. The other one is literally like escaping all of it. Right. It's like, insane. The homeowners could literally just go sit out in the front landscape bed and have coffee in the evening because and it'll be warm. nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> you saw where I was going with that. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. But no, that's what we really wanted to do with this you know, episode is just give some basic and practical examples of how is your home working for you? What are some things that maybe you could think about that would make your home perform a little bit better from an energy efficiency standpoint, which in turn are obviously going to save you money over the long term. So I don't know, Greg, what's going through your mind? We've looked at a, you know, a couple different dynamics of this you know, house right now we've looked at some different areas of you know where you could save money and you know where heat escapes what's going through your mind with all this right now at this point i'm thinking there are very very i'm thinking about my own house at this point to mm -hmm. be honest and i'm thinking about hmm. stuff i can do this weekend yeah um i can go get some little tents i've got can lights i've got eight or ten of them in yeah. the common great room so i can go get some little tents um i can go get a blanket for my water heater and, and some little wraps for the tubes. And and I, and I know when we were at this house, we didn't get into the crawl space. And the, the, it, but there's no basement. This is a crawl space. Mm -hmm. I know we didn't get down there, but I, I started thinking about, okay, I can wrap my hot water lines that run all over the house, right? Um, I can wrap my ducks. I mean, you, I, I can go to Lowe's tomorrow, Ryan, and spend 200 bucks, fill up most of my Saturday. 200 bucks, Fill up most of my Saturday and make my house so much more efficient infinitely more efficient and you know we've just shown some examples of small products that you can you know simply install that are going to make that big difference right there and again success is the little things compounded over time yep. and if you do enough of those small things now all of a sudden maybe you're saving an extra 50 bucks a month which you just said 200 dollars. well 50 bucks a month yeah that took a few months and it paid for yeah. itself and then you get that benefit for the rest of the time that you own that house right it's exciting stuff. It is. And I geek out on this stuff. I love going through houses with people and just kind of showing them things and just kind of educating homeowners on what's going on with their homes. Because a lot of times people just don't know. And tools like this, you know, thermal camera make that super, super easy to do. And the thing is, back to your compound effect comment, I, and I think this is really important to think about. Um, I, let's say, what, and I'm just making up a, a unit of measure, but let's say... Me making a few little improvements on my home will save me five units of energy. Yeah. And that doesn't seem like much. 
And a lot of people get wrapped up into the, well, I mean, I'm just one guy. I'm just one gal. Um, it, it, five units is not anything but 5, 10, 15. Multiply yeah. that by 10 million, by 100 million. You know what I mean? Yeah, by that, 7 billion. Yeah. And, and the compound effect, it, what I'm saying, is, it works globally, too. That's what I love about it. And, you know, it's it's just simply choosing to make some decisions to, you know, if you care about this stuff. Not everybody cares about this stuff, and I totally respect that, too. But, you know, for those that do, I think it's highly fascinating. I think there's so many opportunities to save money. And, you know, if I uh, don't have to pay the energy company money, I could go have another beverage. I could go hang out with some friends. I could go use that money in many, many other places. I could invest it, et cetera, versus continuing to pay energy bills, which, by the way, are not going down. Right. So, so, so great. I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so is like the color purple representative of a certain temperature? Like do you set a baseline or is it really just um, showing the differences between two temperatures, whatever that may be? Great question. That's a really, really good question. It's actually showing the temperature differences between the different surfaces there. So so it's gauging, hey, what's the temperature of this surface versus this surface? And that's where it's distinct distinguishing i can never say that word very well that's where it distinguishes the color that it applies to the photo gotcha so if you're in like a, a 75 degree house it's going to be and and no differences it's going to be purple if you're in a thousand degrees and no changes it's still going to be like the same color what's super fascinating about it is it's going to pick up on all the little things you know when i first got this camera i, I probably spent i don't know several hours around my house just kind of playing with it and experimenting with it and you know i like had the faucet running right and i mm -hmm. had the cold you know cold water running and it kind of filled up you know my sink in in, in the kitchen and then all of a sudden to see if it would change like in real time i turned the hot water on and sure enough, all of a sudden, it went from like a purple stream of water to a fire stream of water. And then it looked like this crazy concoction. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Today's keyword is fire. Down. So it is fire today. But uh, <laughs> but it was really, really interesting. So, it, yeah, it, it's looking at the different temperatures that it, you know apply to the room that it's in right now. So, Ooh. And I, to me, it's a great tool because it's a great opportunity for people to see a see very, very real example of how this stuff works. If, if, when I show these people that own this house the window i put in and the window i haven't changed you might I, sell some more windows greg I, I bet they call me you might sell some more windows there <laughs> i think so <laughs> and so my encouragement to to anybody watching number one if, if if this is interesting to you but you're not sure where to start call myself or ryan yeah we'd love to help you with this greg and i both geek out about this stuff and you know we'd be happy to answer any questions put you, point you in the direction of hey which camera should i buy what's right for you you know this is the you know this is like you know an eight out of a ten you know what i would say there's one more level up that i could have bought that would have been you know a little bit you know clearer resolution yeah. but it's a really really good camera and it only cost i think almost 400 bucks you know 350 400 bucks whatever it was so it wasn't a big investment but it was a tool that really just help homeowners understand the stuff that we're trying to you know personally help them with you know the green stuff that's why we do solar it's why we do attic insulation it's why we try to find ways to help people make their homes work better for for them versus against them Right. And, and it, it, again, it's the little things. Mm -hmm. So call myself, call Ryan, leave a, leave a comment, send us a message, whatever. One of us will be glad to help you. Um, he, he, and it, it, let me, I don't know how to say this delicately. We're not trying to sell you something. No, not at all. If you not have questions, all. let us answer your questions. Let us help you understand what we've learned. And then you can do it yourself. Everything I'm going to do this weekend to the house, it, it's not hard stuff. Nope. It has nothing to do with I used to be a contractor, right? If I was an accountant, no offense to my accountant if you're watching, um, but it doesn't matter what your job is. It's easy stuff that you can do yourself. Yeah, these are all DIY projects we've talked about today. You know, outside of maybe replacing a window, you know, maybe that's outside of the scope of what some people want to take on. But everything else we've talked about is a DIY project. And you watch a YouTube video or two, you reach out to Greg or I, and we are beyond happy to help answer any questions and support what you're working on to make your home work for you. So, Greg? It's been a fun Friday at 5. It really has. And and uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Next week, we are not going to be live. We're not going to be live next week. But stay tuned for future episodes where we, we are going to continue to work on all things real estate and construction for you. But next week, we're going to have an episode drop that you're going to love. I promise. So tune in. Check it out. And, and, and until that time, I'm Ryan. And I'm Greg. Thanks so much, everybody. We appreciate you.